Great to see all of you in your winter issue. There's Sarpa and there's Baikis. Uh, the 8 o'clock meeting had a little bit of sun come through that door. It was the prime seat in the 8 o'clock meeting. But it's great to have you with us this morning. Please open your Bibles to two passages, Exodus chapter 25 and Galatians chapter 5. If you're visiting us at the base this morning, welcome. Great to have you with us. We preaching through a series on the purposes of God. How do we serve the purposes of God? I suppose it's one of those series that could never end because everything is about serving God's purposes, I suppose. But um, I do believe there's still space for us to, to learn how to serve the purposes of God with the help of the Holy Spirit. So I want us to start reading in Exodus 25. We had a portion in the story where God has liberated the Israelites out of Egypt. And now they camped at Mount Sinai. And Moses is being instructed on how to build a tabernacle. Because God wants to dwell amongst his people. And so there's a lot of instruction happening from Exodus 14 on. There's a lot of instructions. The Lord is busy setting up government. He's busy setting up legislation. He's busy establishing culture. And in Exodus 25, we find the instructions that Moses has to go and do to enable God to dwell amongst his people. Last time we looked at the ark that had to go into the most holy of holies. And today we're going to look at the the table and the lampstand. Now let's read together before I get ahead of myself. I'm quite excited about this morning. Exodus 25, verse 23. It says, make a table... Of acacia wood, two cubits long, a cubit wide, and a cubit and a half high. Overlay it with pure gold and make a gold molding around it. Also, make around it a rim a hand breadth wide and put a gold molding on the rim. Make four gold moldings on the rim and make four gold rings for the table and fasten them to the four corners where the four legs are. The rings are to be close to the room to hold the poles used in carrying the table. Make the poles of acacia wood, overlay them with gold, and carry the table with them. And make its plates and dishes of pure gold, as well as its pitchers and bowls for the pouring out of offerings. Put the bread of the presence on this table to be before me at all times. Please underline that in your Bible. The bread of presence. Then verse 31 says, Make a lampstand of pure gold and hammer it out, base and shaft. Its flower-like cups, buds, and blossoms shall be of one piece with it. Six branches are to extend from the sides of the lampstand, three on one side and three on the other. Three cups shaped like almond flowers with buds and blossoms are to be on one branch. Three on the next branch. Branch. And then the same for all six branches extending from the lampstand. And on the lampstand, there are to be four cups shaped like almond flowers with buds and blossoms. One bud shall be under the first pair of branches extending from the lampstand. A second bud under the second pair and a third bud under the third pair. Six branches in all. The buds and the branches shall all be of one with a lampstand, hammered out of pure gold. Then make its seven lamps and set them up on it so that they light the space in front of it. Its wick trimmers and trays are to be of pure gold. A talent of pure gold is to be used for the lampstand and all these accessories. See that you make them according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. Galatians 5, please. Verse 
Verse 16 says this. Galatians 5, 16. So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature or the flesh. For the flesh or the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other, so that you do not do what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under law. Verse 22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature or the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. Father, this morning, I'm mindful that the detail that Moses works with can trip us up. Therefore, I ask that you would come and that you would help, Holy Spirit, for, for those who hear the word this morning, that we would hear the word with gladness and with joy, that we will hear the word with clarity. And I ask this morning, Holy Spirit, that you'll help me. Thank you that you have anointed me to serve your people. Help me to do it well this morning, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So what you find in Exodus 25 is you find the activity of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to make it clear to you. The title for this morning's message is this, Establishing God in Your Soul. How many of you know that when you got born again, there's some incredible, miraculous powers that happen to your spirit? Happy? It says your spirit got made new in a moment. Do you know where your mind was at that moment? Your mind was not looking. Your mind wasn't present. Your mind wasn't born again in that moment. Your spirit was. And so within your soul, you have to train your mind. You have to, to transition your mind into the realities of what has just happened inside of your spirit. And so what you need for that is you need the help of the Holy Spirit. And so as we look at the, the table and the lampstand, what we find is Old Testament language of God setting it up with Moses for the activity of the Holy Spirit within the holy place. Now for any Jew that walked into this tabernacle, into this tent that Moses set up, for anyone, any priest that would walk into this tent, just take the journey with me. If you come into the outer court, You'll find all the brazen altars, the place where there's a huge sacrificial burning altar. And then you'll get to the bronze altar or the bronze basin where you can wash your hands before you get into the holy place. When you open the curtain into the holy place, you'll be struck with three items that's standing out. There's only two mentioned in this portion. You'll be struck with this candle with seven flames on it. It looks like a tree that's providing light for this holy place on your right. On your left, you'll find this table of presence. And right in front of you, you'll find an altar of incense. What would be striking to any Israelite walking into the holy place would be the amount of gold that's radiating back at them. They'll be struck with the fact that there's always bread and there's always light. And so what we have in the Old Testament for the Jews, for these Israelites, understanding how God dwells with them, helps us to establish an, a, a, a foundation for how the Spirit of God works with us. Happy? Jesus himself said he came to break down this old tabernacle, to break down this old temple. Where does God now want to live? Where is the temple that God most desired to dwell in? The base believers, when we meet together, you're close. He's here with us. God desires to dwell inside of us. 
And so this whole Old Testament picture of the tabernacle is so relevant for how we establish ourselves in God and how we allow God to establish Himself within our souls. Tracking with me? For the Old Testament Jews, it was a tabernacle. For New Testament believers, we are that tabernacle. And so what we learn is that salvation happens. The moment I say, Jesus, I need you to save me, in that moment, the mercy of God awakens my spirit to life. And now my soul has to catch on to these realities. So how do we establish God within our souls? It's not a, it's not a, it's not a new thing. It's an old thing. Paul writes it this way. He says, he speaks about the Gentiles. He says, the Gentiles were darkened in their understanding and it led to a hardness of heart. Whenever there's darkness in your understanding, it will lead you to have a hard heart in an area that God wants to lead you in. Peter says it this way. He says that this, the aim of your faith, this, the aim of why you're living a life of faith is for the salvation of your soul, not your spirit. Your spirit is born again. But the way you think, the way you feel, and the way you desire to, to serve the purposes of God, that needs a little bit of adjusting. You need God to establish Himself within your soul. You need God to establish His thoughts into your mind. You need God to establish His emotions, His love within your heart. You need God to establish His strength inside of your desire. Are you tracking with me, church? There's one or two that's nodding. I'm concerned about the rest. The whole setting up of the holy place that Moses is doing is the equivalent of what we need to understand today of God setting himself up inside of your soul. He's already living in your spirit. Your mind just doesn't know it. For most of us, Jesus by the spirit is locked up inside of your spirit and he's trying his best to get out, but your mind is so close to God that you cannot allow Jesus just to have free reign in your soul. So let's look at this. If we're going to establish God in our souls, where do we start? The first thing I want to highlight for you is all the gold that's used in this passage. Gold is still one of the most valuable elements out there. You know that? You'd be wise to invest in gold. Why? Because it has an incredible value. And so as this priest would walk into the holy place, he would be struck with all the gold that's in the holy place. What does it mean for you and for me? It means that God values you. God likens gold items. He likens the value that you have. He, he puts the value of your life, of your soul, at the equivalent of gold. Ladies, do you like it when your husband blesses you with gold? Because diamonds better. The gold in this portion of Scripture speaks about the incredible value that these items have. It speaks about how valuable you are in God's eyes. So if we're going to establish God in our souls, you have to start at this place. You have to establish how valuable you are to God. Establish your value. Establish your value. David had some understanding of the awesomeness of God and how, how amazing God is. And in David's heart, he says, I want to build a dwelling place for God. The problem was is David had blood, guilty blood on his hands. God said, it's a wonderful idea, David, but you're not going to be able to do this for me. And so Jesus comes along in the lineage of David and with clean hands and a pure heart, he gets it right to purchase real estate for God. He gets it right to get God what God wants. He gets it right for every human being that looks to Jesus' sacrifice. He gets it right to cleanse believers 
so that God can come and stay inside of them. Do you know how valuable you are? That the creator of heaven and earth wants to dwell inside of you. Pat yourself on the shoulder and say, I am royal real estate. I've got value. Now, some of you add a lot of value because of your size. Some of you think, yay, it's a little bit. Some of your real estate does not look so attractive anymore because you don't have all the hair that you had when you were 16. Some of you are missing one or two teeth. It's amazing that God says, I value you so much. I want you as my real estate. I want to dwell inside of your soul. The shape and size, I love the diversity. I love to show off my diversity. Come as you are. The biggest mindset that prevents us from enjoying God living and establishing his life in our soul is how we value ourselves. We don't think we're good enough. Why would God want to stay in me? Do you know what I've been up to? Do you know what I've done? Do you know what I look? Do you know what I live with? God knows. And yet he, yet he sent his one and only son to give his innocent blood to purchase real estate for himself, for every single believer. Because he values you. Men, next time you go to gym, you don't have to flex your biceps, but you can kiss yourself. Woman, it's time that you start believing that. What does it look like if you're not believing that you're valuable? You're always looking to compare with others. If only I had that, if only it was this, if only it was this. Some of you, you want to compete, you want to be the best, because if you're the best, maybe God will say, okay, now I'm so impressed, I'm going to move into your soul. Some of us, we make these little boxes, because if I can tick the box, then maybe God will be happy to move in. God says, no, I don't work that way. I value you far more enough. The blood of Jesus was costly. That blood was used to purchase you as my royal real estate. Do you value yourself that way? You might have done some stupid things. But that's why Jesus' blood came, to purchase you for God. Who's got the title deeds for your life? Jesus has. You okay? It's awfully quiet this morning. If you do not see yourself valuable in God's eyes, you'll never see God establish his life inside of your soul. You'll go from course to course to course to course till you end up with course alitis and you'll never quite get it. Why? Because the mindset has to change. God loves you. He values you. He loves your ployer. It gives him a distinct ability to reveal himself through. He loves the circumstance you come out of. It reveals his glory even more. Stop behaving. Start believing that you are valuable in God's eyes. Look at this portion of Scripture. Verse 23 introduces us to the table of bread, the bread of presence. It's amazing how the Holy Spirit is leading us into what this table was about. What comes to mind when you think about a table with food on it? Some of you go like, I'll tell you what comes to mind when I find a table with warm, fresh bread on it. I'm going to sit and just look at it and think, wow. It'd be amazing. 
the instruction to the priests was to make sure that the bread on this table was fresh 24-7. Imagine the aroma. Whoo, fresh bread. Who likes fresh bread? Come, you cannot hide. I can see some of you like fresh bread. <laughs> Bit of butter, butter, and a Coke. Zero, just for the guilt. <laughs> the whole imagery that, 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 that God is wanting these Israelites to capture is that when you come to God, you're coming to fellowship with Him. You're coming to sit with Him. You're coming to eat with Him. Fresh bread just for you. That's why it's called on this table the bread of presence. God wants you to come to Him and in His presence to fellowship with Him. Say, oh, Holy Spirit, I need you this morning. I need your presence because my soul feels so empty. My mind feels so dark. Oh, I need your presence this morning. I need to fellowship with you. It's amazing the imagery that's sitting in the text that we miss. Can you think about that loaf of fresh bread? You go past Doppio Zeros and they've just done their best ground mill bread. Fresh. How inviting is that? You were going to Checkers to buy a chicken, but you stop over at Doppio to take the bread with just in case. Anyone that lives like that? There is two or three. I'm not alone. The whole imagery is it's so inviting to fellowship with God, to get into His presence. If we're going to establish God within our souls, we have to establish fellowship with the Holy Spirit. So where do you start? You establish fellowship by talking to someone. If I never speak to my wife, there's not a lot of joy in my life. How do we start? How do we fellowship with the Holy Spirit? Start to speak to Him as a person. Let me make it fruitcake fruit cakey practical. Pull up another chair in your prayer room for the Holy Spirit. And then go sit and start to speak to the person of the Holy Spirit as if He's sitting on that chair. Your gardener might think you're a bit of a fruitcake at that point. That's where you start. Speak to Him. Say, oh, Holy Spirit, I, I'm desperate for your presence. Good morning, Holy Spirit. I'm going to have this cup of coffee, but what you have, I need far more. Start to talk to the person of the Holy Spirit. Start to talk in His language. I mean, if, if I married an Indian bride and I don't know how to speak her language. Can you imagine the disaster? Finger language will only get us that far. And I don't know how you fight in finger language. But if I want to fellowship with my wife, I have to talk a language. That's why I chose an Afrikaans lady for myself. I didn't want any disruptions to go amiss in terms of our conversation. It's the same with the Holy Spirit. Speak His language. What is His language? Speak in tongues. No more sick with Patay Vayala. There's no greater, deeper fellowship I can have with the Holy Spirit than to just say, Holy Spirit, I long for your presence. Welcome in this room. I just want to deeply talk to you now. Marike me siokho barabestos. What are you doing? You're busy fellowshipping with the Spirit. Some of you are boosting this like, nee, here's the for money, booty. It is. Your mind is just fighting the reality of God, desiring to establish Himself within your soul. That's why speaking in tongues sidelines your mind. It goes straight to your willpower and it activates you from the bottom up, not the top down. How do you build fellowship with the Holy Spirit? 
allow his thoughts to speak to you. How? By simply reading the thoughts that he's pinned for you already. Open the Bible. Say, Holy Spirit, I have got no clue what Janice is trying to say this morning. But let me read Exodus 25 for myself. And trust him to bring his thoughts to you. That's how you fellowship with him. Have you had it that the Holy Spirit gives you his thoughts? You get a revelation. It's like, oh my goodness, I'm going to share it to the whole world. And then you share it with your spouse. And your spouse is like, you're only realizing that now. Come now. You're not supposed to share it with your spouse. You're supposed to share it with the Holy Spirit. He's bringing revelation to you because you're fellowshipping with Him. He's allowing His thoughts to impregnate your soul. You all right? Let me get to the lampstand. Now it's difficult to paint the picture in words of what this lampstand looked like. I tried to get a picture for you this morning and I just couldn't find one that does it justice. This lampstand is known as a menorah, but it resembles a tree. The image that you would get when you look at this lampstand, it looks like a tree that's busy budding with flowers and fruits, with the candles on top. And so this lampstand is profound because the imagery, the image you start to see is this is a tree that is alive. There's fruit coming out, there's flowers on it, it's busy budding. It's producing something because of the life it represents. And then on top of this lampstand, there were seven candles All of them are so symbolic, but all of them are so profoundly relevant to the work of the Holy Spirit inside of our souls, inside of our minds. Let's just stick with a a tree for a little bit. Let's just establish the life that's in this tree that you and I need to know about. The life of God always grows. The life of God always produces fruit. And so this lampstand that looks like a tree resembles the reality of God's life, the life of the Holy Spirit inside of our souls that produces the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And so the impression of this tree, as you look at this golden tree, is the the precious growth, the life of God that is being produced from this tree. Does it sound familiar to Galatians chapter 5, where it speaks about the fruit of the Spirit? So what starts to happen if you fellowship with the Spirit this way? What starts to happen if you start to have a conversation with Him, speaking in tongues? The life of God, the life of the Spirit, starts to produce the fruit of the Spirit in your life. So let's look at those fruits real quick, because you can quickly measure yourself on how effective your fellowship is. Shall we go there? There's two in the front row that seems keen to hear. Concerned about that side of the church, you're awfully quiet. So Galatians 5.22 speaks about the fruit of the Spirit. If the fruits are there, it means the evidence of me fellowshipping with this life of God is a reality. Happy? So let's measure your fruit and then we'll know how intimate your fellowship is. The first fruit, love. How are you doing with love this morning? I especially talk to those spouses that had a bit of a brawl coming to church this morning. We had to learn to come in two cars. That's how we thought we can maintain love. The fruit of joy. How joyful are you? The fruit of peace. The 
fruit of patience. Hey, now we're getting close to home. The fruit of goodness, of kindness, of faithfulness, of gentleness, of self-control. The fruit becomes an indication of how intimate your fellowship is, of how much of God has been established in your soul, how much of God has been established in your mind, how much of God has been established in your heart, how much of God has been established in your strength. So if you battle with self-control, don't go to Weight Watchers. Go to the Holy Spirit. If you battle with self-control, don't go to AA. Begin with the Holy Spirit. If you battle with love, be honest enough to say, Oh, Holy Spirit, oh my goodness, I don't know how to love. If you're battling with joy, come to the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, I don't know. I don't know when last I was joyful. I need you to help me. That's what he's there for. Peace. Lord, I am worried about every other thing and its dog. Help me. Patience. Don't raise your hands. How are you doing with patience? It's a fruit of fellowshipping with the Spirit. If there's no patience, it's because there's no time that you make to pursue the person of the Holy Spirit. Goodness. What is that? Kindness. I don't know such a word. Faithfulness. My yes is my yes. My no is my no. Gentleness, self-control. Can you see that the life of the Spirit, the life of God inside of your soul, when you start to fellowship with Him, when you start to measure where your fruits are not showing, it becomes an opportunity to invite Him in. So I want you to make a note of this. Failure a spot of growth. How do you grow these fruits? You fail. And then you come back to God and say, oh, Holy Spirit, I need help. The way I've been thinking about my wife, oh my goodness, it needs changing. My mind is so unholy. The thoughts I'm thinking are so unholy. It is so unloving. Holy Spirit, come into this unholy mind and make it holy. The way I'm thinking about the pressures of life, it has got me losing all of my joy. Would you please, Holy Spirit, present your holy life into my mind so that I can start to live with joy. Failure is part of growth. Do you know this? If you're a believer here this morning, there's nothing that you can do that will kill the life of God that's already inside of you. Do you know that? So it's good news. There's nothing you can do that will kill the life of God that's already inside of you. It's called grace. The Bible says God provided an abundant provision of grace so that nothing that you will ever do, whatever mistake you ever make, whatever failure you ever do, can ever extinguish his life. His life is guaranteed. Why? Because it rests on Jesus. It's a reality inside of your spirit. What we're talking about this morning is you learning to grow your soul to the place where God can be established inside of your soul. Some of you can just go, I can make a mistake. 
I don't have to get it perfect. That's why the Holy Spirit is our helper. Are we good? Let's quickly look at the, the light that comes from this lampstand. Can you hear the activity of the Holy Spirit, the life of God, and the light of God? That's the work of the Holy Spirit. So I can, I, can, I can sound very charismatic or very learned this morning when I talk about the sevenfold spirit of God. It's like, woo, you know, can't say Bible. And I can go on about the sevenfold manifestation of God and all I'll really be describing to you is I'll be describing to you the work of the Holy Spirit that is linked to the light of God. So these seven candles represents the activity, the work of the Holy Spirit to produce light into your soul. That's why Paul encourages the Ephesian believers. He encourages them to say, guys, where your mind is darkened, fellowship with the Holy Spirit. In the places where your mind is dark, the Holy Spirit will come and he'll shine a light. And in that moment, it's like, I don't know what I was thinking, but now I think different. And so the seven activities, the activities of the person of the Holy Spirit gets presented in these seven candles. Isaiah 11 describes them. Don't go look now, I'll just name them. The first activity of the Holy Spirit described in Isaiah 11 is that he gives rest. Yo. I can do with some of that. Some of you are thinking, yes, we just had a three-week break. Now we have to get back running. I don't know how I'm going to do that. You're weary. You're tired because you're staying in a town that is crazy busy. How would you like to get some rest this morning from your weariness? I'm in. Me and three others will dance a pretty dance this morning. This rest that the Holy Spirit gives also gets you to rest from your work. You don't have to impress God anymore. Jesus has done that so you can take a breather and say, whew, the job is done. I can enter rest. I can take a breather. God is pleased with me. Ivo, you're busy with a big project on the farm. What will it feel like when that project is done? He's like, yeah, I don't know what to imagine what it'll feel like. That's the kind of rest that the Holy Spirit describes. That's His work. That's His activity to lead you into rest from your weariness, to lead you into rest from your work, that you can have so much confidence and so much peace. Oh, wow. It is so awesome to be right with God. Why? Because Jesus did all the work. can do with rest this morning. Second activity of the Holy Spirit is to bring wisdom. You bring God's mind to your mind. My goodness. You know that you're you're about to make your boss stinking rich in his business. How? Because you know how to access wisdom from the Holy Spirit. Do you know that you can access wisdom to start your own business and make stinking loads of money? You guys look reluctant. No, 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 Yanis, you don't know. God wants to keep me poor. It's like, okay, so why did he send Jesus? He wants you to be flush. He wants you to flourish. You just have to get your poverty mind out of the way. And then make sure that you are obsessed with Jesus, not with the finance. Third activity of the Holy Spirit, it says, is understanding. You can pray for your wife for understanding so that she can understand you. There's more to that. Please, but at least start there if that's your need. I'm happy. He will sort out your marriage. It says he's the spirit of counsel. He gives you advice. He's the spirit of power. Do you know that the power moments that Jesus did is available for you to do? 
This front row is convinced, but this side is not. How? By the shining of the light of the Holy Spirit, adjusting the darkness in your mind to say, oh, wow, Jesus showed me the way. I can also go do that now. The knowledge of God, the secret things of God. Who would like to know some secrets of God? It's available through the Holy Spirit. This, this working is so powerful, you can even highlight the secrets in the hearts of men while you're having coffee with them. You must try that one. That's quite a neat party trick. It's like, why are you thinking about this? And the Lord shows me this and this. And the guy's like, how do you know that? Uh, uh, you know the Holy Spirit? He just revealed it to me. The working of the Spirit to bring the fear of the Lord into your life. That's the, those are the seven activities of the Holy Spirit that's represented in these candles. Why would you not want to fellowship with Him? Why would you not want to establish your mind in line with this truth that says, Oh, Jesus, thank you that you died. Thank you that you're busy establishing the life of God, the life of God, and the light of God inside of my soul. I will allow no unholy thought to dwell there any longer. Come and put the light on that thing. Come and put the life of God on that thing. See, we've got the answer, church. The base believers has the answer. Do you believe that, sir? All that's needed is to know that we have to fellowship with Him and we allow God to establish Himself in our souls, establish Him in our thinking, establish Him in our hearts, establish Him in our desires. So I love this bit. This is where Paul gets 1 Corinthians 12 from when he speaks about the manifestations of the Spirit, the phenereses, the display of light, of this light of God, of this power of God. And so you have on this tree, you have the fruits of the Spirit and you have the nine gifts of the Spirit. Where does it come from? From the Spirit. The life of the Spirit produces the fruit. The light of the Spirit produces these spectacular displays of God's flashing manifestations of power and revelation and utterance. Wow. Some of you are like, yes, I didn't know that I got all that when I believed in Jesus. You didn't. What you got when you believed in Jesus is you got the eternal life. But when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, you get everything that I'm describing to you this morning. A little bit different. I was so shocked when people told me about this. I thought, oh, these oaks are leading me down the, the path now. Till I experienced the life of God, the light of God through the Holy Spirit within my soul. Oh, it was glorious. So I want to close simply with a simple, obvious truth that's sitting in this text that we tend to read and we miss. I want to take you back to a priest walking into the tabernacle that Moses has set up. He goes past the bronze altar. He goes past the bronze basin. He walks into the holy place. And there's this overwhelming reality of light and gold and value more than anything else, is that 24-7 there's bread available. 24-7 this light on this lampstand is lit. The instruction to the priest was, you make sure 24-7 there's bread and 24-7 there's light. Why? Because the imagery that Jesus or that God wants to imprint in their minds is that when you come to God, He's always available to feed you, and to bring revelation to you. Always available. He's not a God that gets stuck in the toilet when you need Him. 
He's not a God that takes a, a late morning lie down because he's so tired of running the whole world. He's a God who is 24 7 available. That's the imagery that you must get when you see the bread on the table and the light on the lampstand. That means he's available to you right now. That means if you start to call on his name right now, he will come. I don't know about you, but that takes my breath away. So would you mind to close your eyes? If you believe in Jesus, just to start to call on him. Call on the name of the Lord. He's available this morning. He's available this morning. We call on you this morning, Jesus. We come and we approach you, Father, through the powerful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, we bless you. We bless you. We call on your name. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you this morning that we can invite you as a personal friend. Thank you that we can welcome you this morning, Holy Spirit. That we can welcome you in our midst. Just where you're at, don't you want to start to talk to him? Just welcome him. Welcome him into your life. Welcome him to your mind. Welcome the Holy Spirit to your heart. Just where you're at, just welcome him. Start to speak to him. We welcome you, Lord. There's specific areas this morning that I feel the Lord is highlighting for me that I'd love for us to respond to so that we can trust the Holy Spirit to, to minister and move some things. I believe there's some of us this morning that's battling with a mindset or dark thoughts about how invaluable you are or how little value you carry. If that's you this morning, I'd love for you just to stand where you're at. If you're entertaining any thought that why would God touch my life, if there's any thought of that that belittles yourself or that thinks less of yourself. I'd love for you to stand. Just bless you, Lord. Just bless you, Lord. Praise you, Holy Spirit. Awesome, 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 mighty God. Awesome, mighty There's a mindset in your mind that says, I don't know if God can use me with his power. I'd love for you to stand. You'll open yourself to the reality of who God is through the Holy Spirit. He will release his power through you. He will release revelation through you. He will release utterances. He will speak through your voice. pray this morning for those who's battling to love battling to find your joy battling to find your peace if you're dead honest you're so impatient not just with others but with God and with yourself there's a certain mindset this morning that needs the life of God to be produced if that's you I'd love for you just to stand where you're at You've got addictions this morning that you're battling to let go. There's a self-control issue this morning that you need help with. I'd love for you to stand. You need rest this morning. You need the Holy Spirit to come and just lift the weariness off. I'd love for you to stand. Bless you, Lord. As we 
Don't you mind those who are standing? I'd love to lay hands on you just to pray with you. A simple prayer of agreement. Mind to come. I'd love to just lay hands on you. If there's more of you, just would you stand and come to the front? Trusting the Holy Spirit this morning to just to shift things for you. Some of these things you need someone just to help get out of the way so that you can see the light. standing with your mind just to join me in the front I'd love to pray with you just with the laying on of hands would you come would you come some of us this morning is feeling the pressure of having to raise your family in a godly way Some of you are saying, yes, I don't know where to start. I don't know where to, how do I start to help my kids? I don't even know, have, have my life sorted out. How am I going to help my kids do better than what I've done? I want to encourage you, sir, ma'am, that you found a home this morning. The best thing you could do is to start here this morning. Bless you, Holy Spirit. Mind to stand with me, friends. We're gonna, gonna hand the meeting back to Kornai. We're gonna sing. I'll ask the elders to come and help me pray for these friends of ours. It's quite a thought. The Bible says that. You can decide how much of God you want. God gives His Spirit without limit. You can decide where you tap out. Maybe for those that are still standing in their seats, maybe you've tapped out. So I think I've got enough. I'm comfortable here. I'm happy here. But this morning, there's a stirring in your heart to tap back in to say, man, I want to go. I want more God. I want my soul to be established for God to live in. If that's you this morning, I want to ask you just where you're at, just start to call on His name. Open your hands with me and let's start to just ask Him. Jesus, in the places where we've stopped our pursuit of You, in the places where we've allowed the world to capture our hearts and our minds, turn away from that this morning and we say Jesus we desire your light to burn within our minds we desire your life to flow through our souls where there's blockages and stoppages this morning would you remove them Lord the mighty name of Jesus we ask of you this morning we ask of you you're available to meet us We thank you for healing this morning. We thank you that you heal backs this morning. We thank you that you heal relationships this morning. We thank you that you restore vision this morning, Holy Spirit. We thank you that you make Jesus real to us this morning, Holy Spirit. Where there's depression, I thank you this morning that you restore hope. Where there's strategy needed, Lord, we thank you that we can receive it from you this morning. Let's worship Him, friends. Let's worship Jesus and allow the Holy Spirit to come and make Him real.